Hello students! For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ms. Ho. Now, I've created this video as a reference for my students, but if you would like to just watch this video to find out how you can conduct your own experiments at home, please feel free to watch and follow the instructions in this video. So what I will be covering in this video is how to conduct the pendulum experiment in the comfort of your own home. So why I'm creating this video is because, as we know right now, we're under partial lockdown because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and it is disrupting our education. But that does not mean that you cannot conduct your own experiments at home to learn more about the physics concepts. So here's what you need. You will need a string or thread or dental floss. Now try to get it as long as possible, a minimum of say between 100 and 120 centimeters. Also, you would need a pencil or a wooden chopstick. You would also need a long ruler. If you don't have a long ruler, as long as you have something that can take measurements, for example, a short ruler or even a measuring tape, that's fine. You would also need a small but heavy object that you can use as a pendulum. Ideally, we should be using a pendulum bob, but I know that not everyone has a pendulum bob at home, so as long as it's something that's heavy enough to hold the thread down, and able to oscillate, that's fine. So for example, a key or a metal nut, you know, even using an eraser is fine. You would also of course need a stopwatch in order to take the time of oscillations. And most smartphones nowadays come with a stopwatch function. So using your phone is perfectly fine. You would also need a little bit of masking tape. And the last one is actually optional. Now you don't actually need a camera. This is more for my students because they're going to be taking photos for their online project portfolio. So, in my case, I already have all my seven items ready to start doing the experiment. So, I do have thread, and I'm picking thread which I like the least. So, in your case, go with thread that you don't really like. Um, something that maybe you just want to get rid of because you're going to throw this away at the end. If you don't have thread, dental floss or string is perfectly fine. I also have my pencil. I have my long ruler. If you don't have a long ruler, you can also use a measuring tape. Instead of a pendulum bob, in my case, I'm going to be using a metal nut. This is the kind of nut that normally comes with those helium balloons that you buy for, you know, birthday parties or, you know, events and all that. And I, so happens I kept quite a number of these, so I'm going to use this as my pendulum bob. If you don't have this, you can also use a key. I also have my smartphone, which I'm going to use uh, the stopwatch function. And of course, the masking tape. Camera, well... You're watching the video which I'm taking my camera right now. Now, you would also need a surface from which to conduct the pendulum experiment. Uh, please do not mind the mess at the back. I've already cleared up as much as I can. Uh, well, I haven't cleared this up because I wanted to show off my medals and trophies. So, anyway, um, pick a surface that you can conduct the pendulum experiment from. Ideally, please select a surface which won't be damaged when you stick masking tape on. For example, you wouldn't want to pick a surface that uh, has a painted surface which could accidentally come off when you lift the masking tape off. You will end up ruining the surface and then you'll end up being very angry at yourself, your parents are going to be angry at you and then you're going to be angry at me. So disclaimer first, make sure you pick a surface that is safe to use with masking tape. Now in terms of the height of the surface, of course, the higher the height, the more experiments you can conduct. Right, so I would be going with my shoe shelf, which has a height of more than one meter. So that way I can have quite a large range of uh, values that I can work with for my pendulum experiment. However, if you do not have the luxury of this height, you can also go with a chair. So for example, this stool, I'm going to remove the fabric cover of course. We can also use this stool to hold our pendulum, but because it's so short, it's roughly about 30 centimeters height. You probably can't do as many sets as you would like, but that doesn't mean that you still can't do it. You can do it, just that you have a smaller range of numbers. A manipulated variable in this experiment is the length of pendulum and the responding variable is the period of oscillation. So before we get started, select five values of the length of pendulum that is suitable for your surface. So in my case, because this surface has quite a high height, I'm going to pick values of 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 centimeters. If you have a surface that's quite low instead, then you can go with a smaller range of numbers but still select 5. So if I were to use this stool, I can go with increments of 5 cm, which means 5, 
10, 15, 20, and 25 cm. For obvious reasons, you cannot go with 30 cm because it's just going to hit the floor. So in this experiment, what we're going to do is we are going to change the length of the pendulum and we are going to measure the period of oscillation. However, because the period of oscillation of a pendulum is quite short, period of oscillation means the time for one complete oscillation. Because it's too short for us to be able to measure accurately, what we're going to do is we are going to measure the time for many oscillations, roughly about 10. If you find 10 is too short, then go with 20 complete oscillations. In this case, I'm going to recommend just 10 complete oscillations. So here's how we're going to get started. Now, we're going to measure out a long length of thread. Make sure that it's longer than the longest length that you have selected. So for example, I've gone up to 60 centimeters, correct? So you cannot have exactly 60 centimeters. I'm going to add on 10 centimeters to that, which means that I'm going to measure out 70 cm length of the thread. Now, you probably can't see this on screen, but I'm sure you guys know how to measure out the thread, right? So I'm going to go, I'm going to double it up because my ruler is only up to 30 centimeters and we're going to go up to 70 centimeters. Now obviously you're going to need scissors that goes without saying. Now you do not need to cut out so many different lengths of thread. You can just use this one very long thread and reuse this over and over again in your experiment. Now, for the experiment setup, ideally we should have a retort stand to hang the pendulum from, but because we don't have a retort stand at home, we're going to use the pencil instead to hold our pendulum. So what you're going to do is you're going to stick out the pencil, and this is going to act as the holder of the pendulum. So you're going to have to stick it out so that it's far enough for the pendulum to hang from. We will fix this to the surface with the masking tape. So make sure that it doesn't move easily. If you find that the pencil is not very stable, I suggest you fix more masking tape to secure it. The pencil needs to stick out far enough so that the pendulum can swing without hitting the side. Now, so with the string, what we're going to do is we're going to tie the heavy weight, which will act as our pendulum bob. Okay, and make sure that it is secure. A smart way to do the experiment is to make markings on the thread before you tie it onto the pencil so that you know the different lengths which you need to work with. Now remember that the length of the pendulum must be measured from the bottom of the pencil up to the middle of your pendulum bob. So I'm making markings now so that it's easier for me to do my experiment later. Now that you have your markings, what you're going to do is you're going to tie the thread or the string onto the pencil. I would recommend that you start from the longest length that you have selected and what you do after that is you slowly roll it up. So I'm tying one end to secure it onto the pencil. That way, in case the pendulum moves, it doesn't slide off the pencil. Now, before we get started the experiment, please remember to check the oscillation of your pendulum. Please remember that the pendulum needs to swing from side to side and not in circles. Because if this is a circle, that's not an oscillation, right? So you've got to make sure that the pendulum is swinging side to side. Now, if your pencil is not sticking out far enough or if your thread is too close to the edge, what happens is during the oscillation, the pendulum might accidentally hit the edge. Of course, it would be easier if you had a surface where there's no edge for it to hit on. If you have, excellent, carry on. If not, you can always have this stick out a little bit more. Because you must make sure that throughout the oscillation, there are no disruptions to its oscillation. So which means it must oscillate freely in one plane. Another thing to note is that when you want to make this oscillate, do not ever lift it up so high and let it swing wildly like a madman. That's not how you conduct the pendulum experiment. Now, when you want to start the experiment, what you need to do is to displace 
the pendulum bob slightly. To displace means to move it slightly from its original position. When hanging freely, this is where it hangs, correct? So do not lift it up very high. You just need to displace it a little bit and let it go. And you will find it starts to swing naturally with its own rhythm. And that's what we want. So when you're conducting the experiment, remember that one complete oscillation starts and ends at the same point. So for example, starting from here, let go. It's one, two, three, four, and so on. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to take the time for 10 complete oscillations of this length, stop, and repeat, which means you're going to use the same length and take the time one more time. So that means you're going to get two values for every length of pendulum. And the reason why we take an additional value is to minimize random errors. So now that you know how to conduct the experiment, please carry on your experiment with the five values that you have already selected. For obvious reasons, I am not actually conducting the experiment. I am just showing you guys how to do it. If you're wondering how to adjust the length of the pendulum after you've obtained the values for the length you have already done the experiment for, all you need to do is just wrap the thread around the pencil until you get to the next marking. And you can also always double check this value with your ruler. Special note to my students, this is for your online project portfolio. You need to take two photos and one video. The first photo you need to take is a photo of your setup. Second is a selfie with your experiment setup. And thirdly, just submit one video showing 10 complete oscillations of one of the sets of values that you have selected. Meaning, you just take a video of 10 complete oscillations of one of the values of the length of pendulums that you have selected. And that is how you conduct a pendulum experiment in the comfort of your own home. To my students, you will have to submit a report based on the experiment you have conducted, which we will discuss in the next lesson. To the rest of you, if you're curious about how to write a report, I'll be happy to share report writing techniques in an upcoming video. Thank you for watching. Students, please don't forget to click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as my Facebook page, Physics Rocks. Thanks for watching and have a great week ahead.